Well, here we are in the Health Innovation Zone and uh, I'm joined by Dr. Muskin. Dr. Muskin, thanks for joining us. Thank you. You're talking about hypnosis this afternoon. Tell us a little bit about how the session's going to go. So the way this session will go is I will talk some about the science of hypnosis, what we know in terms of brain imaging, uh, fMRIs, what happens, we think, in the brain that defines what I would say is a better term than hypnosis, willful dissociation. That is, choosing to go into a dissociative state and then use it therapeutically. So hypnosis is a technique. Hypnotherapy has a goal of treatment in some way. And all hypnosis is actually self-hypnosis. Tell us a little bit about how that uh, fits into uh, mental health. There are many people, not just people with psychiatric disorders, who can benefit from this technique. About 70% of the population is, is hypnotizable. There are some people perhaps that cannot be hypnotized. But since so many people can use the technique, there are so many ways we can use it. I would start number one, smoking cessation. It's a powerful technique for that. Number two, relaxation. Number three, then a goal of containing a phobia or dealing with pain. I work with patients who have pain. It's a very powerful technique and it has no side effects. So people who are watching along in the audience or are watching along at home, how could they find out more? There are lots of places. If you just put hypnosis into your chat, it will give you many different things. It might take you to the American Society of Clinical Hypnosis. It will certainly take you to the literature in fact, one of the important books on hypnosis was written by Herbert Spiegel, who's passed on, and his son David Spiegel, who's at Stanford, Trance and Treatment. It may be out of print, but you could, could get the book. It's a good education. There's the Oxford textbook of hypnosis if you want to read. Clinical training, on the other hand, means identifying someone who is certified in hypnosis and certified as a trainer, as I am, or the American Society. There are actually a lot of places to get the experience and then to choose do you want to learn how to do it. Now, I have to say when you're running through that list I thought I could tick a few of those boxes myself and I know people who are watching along would like to find out more so perhaps you could take me through the exercise. So I'm going to take you through instant association but I'll ask you to stand up first. Okay. In fact we'll both stand. All right. Now I want you to relax and with your right hand turn, point out, point, and now turn your body as far to the right as you can. Nope, turn your whole body with your hand too. Nope, no moving your legs, just twist. That's it. Now pick a point, see that point, now come back. Put your arm at your side, close your eyes. Take a deep breath, and in your mind's eye, remember that spot you pointed at, and imagine yourself five inches further right. Now come back to center. Take another deep breath. Let it out. Imagine in your mind's eye that you're 12 inches past that initial spot. See it in your mind's eye. Good. Now open your eyes. Now just as you did before, turn your body to the right, pointing your finger, and go as far as you can out to the right. Come back. How much further did you go? A lot further. How did that happen? I know I did. You dissociated? You didn't lose time and space. Your mind said, okay, we're going further the next time. And your body listened. That's instant dissociation. We all have that capacity. And today, we're going to do some of that, some of the science. And then we're joined by James Kellogg, who's a, a performer. And he is going to do hypnosis with the audience. It will be fantastic. Sounds like a fantastic session. And thank you ever so much indeed for helping us. And thank us. you for having me.